On this episode of the podcast, we take a look at the summer blockbuster, The Meg. Written by Dean Georgiaris and John Hobart. Directed by John Turtledob. Starring Jason Statham, Bing Bing Lai, Rain Wilson, Cliff Curtis, Winston Chow, Sophia Kai, and Ruby Rose. Welcome to He Said, She Said Movie Reviews. This is the podcast where a happily married couple with similar but different movie tastes take a quick look at the movies, helping you make the right decision before your next movie. I'm your host, Tim. And I'm April. Is the Meg a summer blockbuster or a big block of summer cheese? We'll tell you all about it right after these previews. The first trailer is Hellfest. A masked serial killer turns a horror-themed amusement park into his own personal playground, terrorizing a group of friends while the rest of the patrons believe that it is all a part of the show. Uh, Perfectly evil and a very frightening movie, it looks to be. The second trailer we saw was for Godzilla, King of the Monsters. I was actually pretty jazzed. I can't wait for this to come out. It was filmed a few miles from our house, so and I've known about it for a long time. It's the next chapter in Warner Brothers' picture, our legendary Cinematic Monster View. It's the action adventure Godzilla. They're bringing out all the um, Godzilla's rivals in this. We're going to see Mothra. We're going to see Rodan. And he even fights the three-headed dreaded King Gridareth. This movie stars Millie Bobby Brown from Stranger Things and Kyle Chandler. Can't wait to see this. And if you're looking forward to the trailers, go out to our um, website, he said, she said, movies.com, and you'll see a sign up for our um, upcoming movies when we're going to be releasing every Thursday night, letting you know what's coming out this weekend. So the movie we saw for this episode is The Meg. This is the summer shark movie starring Jason Stratham. It's directed by John Turtle Dobb and written by Dean Gregorius and John Hobler, starring Jason Statham, Bing Bing Lai, Rain Wilson. Cliff Curtis, Winston Chow, Sophia Kai, and Ruby Rose. That's it. It was very, very interesting movie. I just want to start out by saying that the top two main characters, in my opinion, were miscast. I'm a Jason um, Statham fan, but no, this did not work. And Bing Bing Lai is beautiful, but these two together, this did not work. Did not work. Sorry. <laughs> For me, this movie is one of your typical summer, mindless, popcorn, Saturday matinee type of movies. I enjoyed it for what it was. It's, you know, it's not something that you're going to go out and rush out and say, wow, this was a really good movie. Very cardboard characters. Very. You better probably go over the plot first. I kind of <laughs> jumped in. <laughs> Sorry. What plot? <laughs> um, it was it was kind of a movie that was, you know, it, it is what it is. They upset and found a megalodon in the depths of the ocean, and they upset it, and it came up and started attacking and killing people. I will tell you, there's been a lot of shark movies out. Um, There's been some very good shark movies. Nothing will ever top Jaws, but even, what, two or three years ago, uh, the the movie with um, The Shallows with... um, What's her face from from Gossip Girl? That I I like her so much. Um, Yeah. But there's, so there's some very good shark movies. What really surprised me for a shark movie, this movie had no blood in it. People died, but there was no blood. Not like in Jaws after the shark attack. You'd see red water all over the place. None of that was in this movie. I guess it had a theme about, uh, you know, don't mess with Mother Nature type of theme with everything going on in the ocean. You know, Mother Nature strikes back. But also the tone was too light for a movie where people die, number one. Number two, as far as the plot, I only have one fear. I I always have. It's sharks. It's not a a secret. Um, But I don't believe in fear, and I don't really subscribe to it in any way in life. But I had a very strange years ago situation happen, and I used to swim in the ocean all the time, and I don't now. But I am, you know, I'm afraid, and I was not afraid at all in this movie. It was just, it, it was not believable for me. 
No, there was no scares in this movie. Like, for example, in Jaws, when I remember when when I saw that movie in the theater, when the the guy's head pops through the hole in the boat, when um, Richard Dreyfuss's character's in the water, I hit my head in the back. And I was in the back row of the movie theater, and I hit my head on the fire hydrant and gave myself a concussion. That was a scary movie. <laughs> there was nothing scary in the Meg, but it wasn't an action adventure movie. I don't know necessarily know that it was billed as a horror movie. Right, but it just. I think that what's so hard about it for me is that not only I I mean, even the cast, I I, I didn't like the supporting cast. It just I didn't I I mean, I just had no feels for this movie at all. Oh, for me. Yeah, I agree with you on that one point. You know, for me, Rain Wilson from um, The Office, I loved him in The Office, his character in this movie. I wanted to slap him by the middle of the movie. I couldn't stand his character. Right. Now, the little girl was precious. I mean, she was she was the the shining moment, uh, I think, of the movie. But it just even just I don't know, just the, the little uh, not what it, what it was the little vessel down below the submersibles. Yeah. I mean, even down in those the scenes that were shot were just not believable. No, I, I disagree. I thought the cinematography nice. down at the bottom of the ocean was fantastic. I felt like I was down there and down in the trench below, you know, the dark line and everything. I enjoyed the scenery. Really? I felt like some of that was forced. And just the whole, you know, with his uh, teeth leaving the mark on the glass. Yeah. I I don't know. It just, I wanted, we were excited to go because I I don't know what it is, but I still see shark movies. Um, But it was just... A movie that was just, in my opinion, could have been so much better. Okay, so what exactly are the things that that were bugging you so much about this movie? Well, first of all, um, I I didn't appreciate even the one liners weren't very good. No, I'll agree. Okay. I'll agree with you there that the dialogue was horrible in this movie. Right, and as I mentioned, the cast wasn't right. The the plot that's a whole nother issue. It just everything. I mean, really and truly, I just not a fan at all of this movie. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so so I guess um, are we to the point where we want to rate this one? Are you are you done tearing it apart? Are you done tearing it apart? I I enjoyed it. I had fun with it. So it was a a summer mindless blockbuster film type. So I wasn't expecting much going into it, and it didn't give me much. So, right. but I was entertained. And for me, once again, that's the crucial point for me going to the movie. Am I entertained or not? Right. Um, I was just thinking about the pace of the movie. Um fast pace in the beginning and i don't know but even how it opened i I was gonna say i just i've thought about this a lot and unfortunately we don't usually delay a podcast this many days but i've had a chance to to think about it and some of the sets were fine but overall just the dialogue was corny it just i i keep i think the more i think about it i i want to find better qualities about it but I'm sorry. I just, for me, it's it's a two. Yeah, you know, I, for me, I was really, from John Turtledub, he, the director, he's the guy who brought us the, uh, the Phenomenon, Instinct, National Treasure, The Sources Apprentice, Cool Runnings, While You Were Sleeping. Oh, wow. You know, great director, Don Gigorius, the, the writer, he brought us one of the Laura Croft movies, The Manchurian Candidate, Tristan and Azul. I thought with this this production team behind that this movie was going to be better than it was it wasn't that great i do agree i think the the characters were very cardboard there was no depth to them there was no backstory very predictable movie every time someone fell in the water you're like okay he's next type of thing (laughs) so um but as i said I, i was entertained so i can't tear this movie that far apart it's not a great movie it was funny because I started thinking about this um, from something I saw on Twitter where this movie's done really well opening weekend in the box office. And the Academy Awards has just opened up this new category of best popular movie. <laughs> Good God, the Meg could win an Academy Award. Oh, I just that this whole new um, Academy Award category, I'm not that happy with at all. <laughs> I, I like tradition. You know, I guess in a way it's a way to salute another film and filmmaker, which I guess is always great. But I really, I love the tradition of the Academy Awards. Well, for me, you have, for popularity movies, you have things like uh, the People's Choice Awards. You have the MTV Awards. Good point. 
those are award shows for for the popular mass movie stuff. To me, the Oscars have always been about the art of filmmaking. Right. And so you don't have to have a be a very popular movie to be the best movie of the year, right. in my opinion, because that's what the Academy Awards are about. Right. So this new category, and just once again, it's a little scary to think that this movie, The Meg, could possibly win, it, <laughs> oh win in that gosh. category. So, Oh, I hope not. Um, anyway. So what, what, is it, what did you give that again? I gave, I gave it a two. Okay. Was. I was entertained. I laughed a few times, uh, especially <laughs> there's a scene when the shark jumps out of the water and over the boat type of thing. That really cracked me up. Um, so for me, I, I'm going to have to give this a movie a three. Wow. Okay, we have a very different opinion on this movie, and that's okay. Hey, I didn't give it a five, and it's not going to get my vote for most popular. Right, but again, it's he said, she said. That's the greatest thing. Sometimes we disagree, sometimes we agree. But I, again, I want to thank everyone for your support. We have several movies coming up. We're barely able to keep up right now. There's so many movies. And for those of you who have asked and asked about reviewing Netflix, Prime, and other series, Tim and I are talking very seriously about it because we watch those as well. So, yeah, we're thinking about adding to the podcast and not just doing movies in the theater, but also movies via streaming services. But anyway, I will. we will see you at the movies, and uh, that's about it. And remember, if you haven't already gone, done so, please go out to he said, she said movies.com forward slash subscribe and subscribe to the podcast. It's free. See you at the movies. See you at the movies.